Dear student, welcome to this module of e-lesson. Today, you have chosen to read the lesson on types of menu and menu planning. When you complete this, you should be able to understand that menu is the key control for a food service system, know the various types of menu and be able to differentiate them, plan a menu and understand menu psychology, evaluate the aesthetic characteristics of a menu and understand a menu design. With these objectives, let us start our lesson by knowing that menu is the core component in a food service operation and all the activities revolve around it. A good menu needs to satisfy the customer and also help the management to run a successful business operation. Now, what does the term menu mean? When you go to a restaurant, you first take a look into the card that is kept on the table or handed over to you by the waiter. What do you see in the card? You see a list of the names of the various dishes available and you order your favorite dish, isn't it? The list of food and beverage you order is called as a menu or by definition. Menu is a list or statement of food and beverage sold to the customer by a food service. It is a French term derived from the Latin word minutus which means something small. But let me tell you, in the earlier days when we look at history, the list wasn't small. Originally, the menu was not presented at the table before the guest. Nearly 10 to 40 dishes were placed before the diners entered and after it was consumed, another set of dishes was presented. It is said that in 1541, the Duke Henry of Brunswick referred to a slip before eating his food. When inquired, he said that it was a list of dishes served and by referring it, he could reserve his appetite and know beforehand what food item was coming. Hence, we presume that from such an event, the menu could have originated. Next, we move on to the question, why is menu needed in a food service? Menu is the primary control in a food service operation. In a food service system model, menu is the most important internal control system. It is a sales tool for food service operations and hence is important for a food service. As you see in this flow chart, for example, if the food service is planning to offer a Chinese cuisine, then the human resource needed should be the expertise of a Chinese chef. The layout should have a Chinese kitchen. One of the equipment needed should be a wok and Chinese foods should be available in the region to be purchased. Menu is a major determinant of the budget and the time management also depends on whether elaborate or simple menus are prepared. So, we know that all the managerial and operational functions of a food service, namely recruitment, raw material purchase, layout, equipment, budget, and time management are governed by the menu. Let us now know the different types of menu. Menus are of varied types and they are static, cyclic and single use menu. In a static menu, as you see here, the same items are repeated every day and this type of menu can be seen in restaurants and commercial food service operations. Different menu items served every day either weekly, bi-weekly and repeated at a given interval is a cyclic menu. For example, in a seven day cyclic menu, every day a different menu will be followed and on the eighth day, the first day menu will start again. To tell you in a very simple manner, the menu will be rotated in a seven-day interval. This type of menu can be seen in 
non-commercial institutions like hostels, old age homes and school food service. A single use menu is used for special events like functions, banquets and other special requirements and when used a second time it is exactly not the same. The other types of menu are a la carte. A la carte means from the card. In this menu choices are available for each and every category of food items like starters, beverages, soups and so on. The dishes are priced individually and this kind of menu is suitable for customers who dine leisurely. The menu is also called as a selective menu because it offers number of choices. The next is table d'hôte. Table d'hôte in French literally means table of the host. Unlike the a la carte menu, this offers only a certain number of dishes and the whole menu is priced totally. For example, a starter, a soup, a main dish and a dessert is priced together. Hence, this menu is also called as a set menu or a no choice menu. Combination menu, right. As you have guessed, in a combination menu, choices are available for certain courses so that flexibility is offered like a la carte and for certain dishes, it takes the form of a table d'hôte. For example, choices may be available for starters and beverages, but the main dishes may not have any choice. Du jour means for the day in French. The menu can be an a la carte, table d'hôte or combination menu. These menus are used by small food service operations like coffee shops, snack bars and cafeterias. Having known the types of menu, we now move on to learn the factors affecting menu planning. The factors affecting menu planning are twofold. One is based on the customer and the second is based on the management. First, we will see the factors affecting the customer. The factors are food habits and preferences, nutritional influences and aesthetic factors. Food habits and preferences prevailing in the region where the food service outlet is located is a primary consideration. Cultural food habits and regional food preferences are important in planning the menu. For example, the consumption of pork and beef is not appreciated in certain communities and this has to be taken into account while the menu is planned. Now, how can one assess the food habits and preferences of a customer? Well, a preliminary analysis like small scale surveys, formal and informal interviews with customers, customer comment cards, observations of plate waste and sensory evaluation can help to collect information on food preferences. As you see here in this pictorial chart, the expression of the smiley selected by a child can give information on the child's preference towards the menu. This is a facial hedonic scale used to measure children's food preferences. The other chart gives an idea how food preferences can be evaluated by sensory evaluation. Yet another simple technique can be by knowing the plate waste of the individual. Obviously, if the first picture is selected, it shows the dislike over a food and the last picture indicates that the food is liked very much. Nutritional influence is a very important factor affecting menu planning in the present day because health issues are of great concern and the menu should be planned taking into consideration the health and nutritional needs of the customer. For example, a food pyramid can be used to plan a balanced diet. Regional foods, traditional foods and special diets like diabetic diets 
are into the regular menu pattern today. Many food service operations employ a nutritionist or a consultant dietitian to help plan menus like this. The third factor is the aesthetic factor of a menu. Food items should have a balance in flavor, texture, color and consistency. For example, if a menu has a chocolate cake, a chocolate ice cream and a cocoa drink, how will it be? Every item will be of the same taste and flavor, isn't it? So foods of similar attributes should not be repeated. Next, we will learn the factors affecting menu planning from the management's viewpoint. Food cost, production capability, types of service and availability of foods are the factors based on management. The cost of raw and prepared food items determines the food cost. The number of working hours, number of employees, skills of the employees at a given time determines the menu items to be served. Some menu items can be prepared in advance and some menu items need last minute preparations. Hence, based on production capability, the menu will change. Based on the type of service offered in a food service operation, the menu will be different. For example, a restaurant with table service will have a different menu when compared to a hostel. Certain menu items require special serving equipment and if the establishment can fulfill these requirements, menu suiting this condition can be planned. The availability of local foods, seasonal products, processed and preserved foods decide the menu to be offered. The frequency of delivery of food products from various markets also decides the menu to be planned. For a short recap, so far we have seen that menu planning is affected by food habits and preferences, nutritional influences and aesthetic factors based on the customer. Food cost, production capability, types of service and availability of foods are based on the management. How can a menu be constructed? A menu has to be planned in a systematic manner. First and foremost, whether a set, selective or a combination menu has to be decided. The degree of flexibility to be incorporated should be decided. The main dish and the side dishes have to be planned to enhance the color, texture, flavor and taste of the meal. In case of cyclic or weekly non-cyclic menus, the same food item or dish should not appear consequently on two or more days. Menu sequence should offer a balanced and a reasonable choice among the dishes. There is no relationship between the length of a menu and its quality. A customer may be disappointed at having insufficient choices in a short menu, whereas if the menu is too long, it may be a collection of items with medium quality. Hence, a balance between offering a reasonable choice with quality dishes is important to be planned. The type of dishes are normally grouped in the following order. Starters. The term starters is used for all the dishes that are small in size and for those that are designed to stimulate the appetite. All diners may not choose a starter. Generally, starters are the most commonly ordered at dinner, although many lunch menus now have a starter on offer. Examples of starters are small serves of seafood, spicy chicken wings, bread with dips and many others. The second course is soups. There are different types of soups. Some diners will order soup as a starter. Care must be taken in the portion sizes if it is ordered as a starter. Soups come in different varieties such as thick and creamy, clear and light 
and hot and cold. Our third course is entrees. Traditionally, the entree is a dish between the starter and the main course. Some main courses are offered in entree sizes for those with smaller appetite. Fish and seafood meals are commonly served as entree sizes. Pasta is commonly offered in main and entree size. The fourth course is the main course. A main course is the basis of the meal. In continental cuisine, it is normally a meat or poultry dish with a starch and two to three vegetables. Then we move on to side dishes. Some menus offer side dishes. These are developed to accompany the main course and would include cooked vegetables, starches and salads. Many of these side dishes can be ordered in large sizes as a main course such as special salads or vegetarian dishes. The last course is desserts. Desserts may be included on the main menu or presented on a separate dessert menu. Desserts could include the traditional sweets such as cakes, pastries or pies as well as various types of cheeses. Now join me to plan a menu in relation to the French classical menu sequence. France is not only the birthplace of fashion, but the French people are gourmets or those who appreciate good food and drink. And hence, the French menu is considered as a classical menu. A French classical menu has number of courses and we shall plan one with 11 course. In this slide, you can see the dishes appearing in sequence with the French menu and the corresponding English terms. You can learn the pronunciation for the French terms in quadrant 4 under the section glossary. Our first course in French classical menu is others. Others is usually foods that are tangy, salty, sour items which stimulate the appetite. The next is potage or soup. It is an extract of meat, vegetables, fish or poultry in stock or water and can be served piping hot or cold. The third course is poison or fish. Fish items like poached fish, deep fried, shallow fried, grilled and steamed fish can be given. The next course is entree. The word entree literally means entrance. It can be cereals, different preparation of eggs, sausages and pasta. The next course is relevi. It's a main course in English and can be big joints of lamb, chicken, veal served with accompaniments of vegetables and potatoes. The sixth course is sorbet. Sorbet is considered as a rest course and is mainly ice water flavored and sweetened with fruits and fruit juices. Our next course is roti. In this course, game birds like chicken, pigeon, duck and so on is served. Legumes, different kinds of vegetables like carrots, lettuce, mushrooms, artichokes are served in this course. Antremet is a sweet course and hot or cold puddings and sweets are usually served. Fromage, it means different types of cheeses and this is considered as a single course. The last course is dessert. This course offers fresh and dried fruits. After the 11 courses, coffee is served which is customary at the end of the meal in a French cuisine. In continental cuisine, Deserts could include the traditional sweets such as cakes, pastries or pies as well as various types of cheeses or cheese platters. After getting an idea of the sequences of the menu, we shall now see how a menu can be presented to a customer. 
techniques used in the graphic design and layout of a menu to influence menu selection by customers are referred to as menu psychology. Understanding the eye gaze motion will help us to design a menu card. For example, as you see in this threefold menu, the items which are printed in the center get more attention and therefore the primary items which have to be sold more can be at the first or at the center. In this slide, a small font size and style is difficult to see and hence should be avoided. The color and shading of fonts should be done to attract customers. Spacing and grouping of this menu should be given attention. The final appearance of a planned menu as it is presented to the customer is known as a menu design. Presentations and the type of menu differ from one establishment to another. Menu design is an art form where there is more to a menu than its cover. It should convey simply, clearly and precisely what is a food and drink that is being offered to the customer. Designing menus is important as menus act as an advertisement for the establishment which the customer can take as a souvenir. It can be used as a vehicle for artistic and creative expression and are often designed to match the decor of the establishment. First impression is the best impression and this holds good for a menu card also. As you see in this video, a menu card should be appealing, the content should be listed legibly for reading, tips on different cuisines should be given, the format has to be designed so that price fluctuations can be accommodated without cancellations and overwriting and it should be laminated. Methods of display of a menu card helps the customer to understand better. A menu card can be seen only after the customer enters a food service, but if the menu is showcased effectively, passers by can be attracted and can visit the food service. Showcasing menu, as you see here, should be done at a vantage point and should be well lighted where the customer can see. Needless to say, it should be attractive and easy to maintain. Leaflets are another way of displaying menus and as you see here, it could be posted in newspapers as flyers. The modern trends of displaying menus are online through mobile apps and e-menu digitally displayed as you see on the guest table. Online menu is available in travel catering and restaurants have their own websites where a menu can be booked. During special functions, a small menu card can be kept in front of the guest. Now, to summarize, menu is an important tool and is the center point of all activities in efficient management. Depending upon the type of establishment, the types of menu can vary. The factors to be borne in mind while planning menus are the customer's food preferences, socio-cultural factors, nutritional guidelines, and aesthetic factors. From the management viewpoint, the production capacity, food cost, and types of service have to be remembered. An attractive menu display 
and a menu card is essential. And let me finish by saying that a good menu speaks good about the organization. Thank you students for your attention and good listening. I hope now you will have a very good idea about the different types of menu and menu planning. Hope to see you in the next lesson. Thank you.